Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is called Always Use a Scale Reference When Modeling in 3D. So this may seem like a small thing, but it's a very important thing, and can be easily forgotten as you're focusing on modeling an object in 3D, and you're not yet worrying about how that object will fit into the larger environment. But how your object interacts with the whole is frequently more important than the object itself, and so getting scale right at the beginning will save everyone a ton of headache. What sort of headaches? Well, beyond having to rescale the object when it reaches the environment, there's plenty of other ways this can go sideways. Some material types rely on world space for their coordinate system, and so scaling your object later on will mess up your material. If you're doing simulations such as water or fire, and someone accidentally uses an object that's the wrong size, scaling the effect is usually not as easy as grabbing it and using a scale tool. And if you rig a character that's the wrong size, scaling the rig can cause all sorts of errors in broken geometry. So it's far easier to make sure the scale of your object is right in the first place. As a somewhat silly but still pertinent example, there's this great film called This is Spinal Tap from the 80s, and there's a scene in the film that pertains to this, so spoiler alert, I'm going to tell you one of the jokes. The movie is about a fictitious rock band, and in one scene they want to play a song about Stonehenge, and they want a stage prop of one of the pillars, so they draw this little diagram, and they accidentally mark it as 18 inches tall instead of 18 feet tall. So when they play the concert, instead of this mammoth rock that instills awe and wonder in the crowd, they get this ridiculous two-foot rock. So the lesson here is don't be like Spinal Tap. Make sure you have the scale right at the beginning. Now it's not totally the artist's fault. When you load up almost any piece of 3D software, there's nothing in your scene to tell you the scale of anything. I mean there's a grid, but what size is the grid? And what size is a grid square? And is it the small grid square or the larger grid square that's one unit? And to find out the size of a unit, you generally have to go several hidden menus deep in order to see this. So 3D software in general could do a much better job of making scale obvious. So what I do to solve this is have a 6 foot tall human model in my scene at all times. Now I'm biased since I am a 6 foot tall human, but it's not the specific size. The important part is I always have the human in the scene, so I can always turn it on and see the scale of what I'm modeling. I also have some other scale models, like a car or a single floor of an apartment building. And I use a script I wrote years ago in 3ds Max to quickly pull these assets into my scene so I can always check. At Pixar, we tended to have a flat plane that had a picture of our production designer on it. So when he came to your desk and asked what the scale of your object was, you just load in the flat plane so we could immediately tell sizes. Again, the important part isn't what you use as a scale reference, the important part is using it. If you don't have a quick way to load a scale object, another technique is to always start with one. For example, in 3ds Max, if you make a file called maxstart.max and place it in the default scenes directory, when you reset a scene or start 3ds Max from scratch, it will not load a blank file, but instead it will load your max start file and anything in it. So make a blank scene, place your human in there, save it as max start, and now every time you load max you'll have your scale reference ready. And there are similar systems for the other major 3D programs out there as well. So please consider using a scale reference when modeling in 3D. It will save you tons of trouble later on, and will make life easier for the next person in the pipeline if you're working at a studio. So thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more tutorials like this, please go to neilblevins.com and go to the Art Lessons section. And if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.